Like, I'm excited to be outside and be a Democrat again. <laughs> I'm not ashamed <laughs> by my choices on the ticket. Oh, it's just so great. It's so great. I love being happy. Welcome to Millennial, the home of pretend adulting and real talk. I'm Andrew. I'm Laura. And I'm Pamela. And it's Tuesday at 7.30 p.m. Eastern. I personally am riding high on the Harris Walls launch event in Philadelphia. I was watching some clips. And today's the day that Harris announced her VP choice, too. So we're going to talk about that in a moment. But first, we have bigger news for America. This is, frankly, way bigger than the Walls news. <laughs> This year's millennial patron exclusive IRL gift is here and we're calling it or I'm calling it the M word cloud (laughs) t-shirt and I'm actually wearing it right now. So we are doing a t-shirt this year for patrons at the bay level or higher. This is printed on a Bella canvas lightweight tee. It's the M of millennial created with lots of different references to the show, like pals, our new name for listeners, farm girls, great calves, which is a throwback. (laughs) There's also words like avocados, stable genius, do not social, mica chair. No, we're not sending him any royalties for that. And dozens more all wrapped up in the word cloud. Laura, Pam, you got the shirt too already, right? Yeah. yeah, it's super cozy. And I will say we got our shirts. And I'm not going to spoil anything. But you know, there have been some recent events. And we were all chatting after we looked over our shirts. And they're great. And we love them. But we were like, we think we need to add a couple of things. <laughs> yeah. So this word cloud is very up to date. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I really like mine too. Super comfy. Um, sizing is very like true to size too. So if you go by the size chart, you won't go wrong. Um, yeah, I've been wearing it to the gym already. It's a great cozy workout shirt. Oh, cool. And what's nice about it is there are some political references on the shirt, but the words are small. So like you're not going to be throwing certain phrases in people's yeah. faces like stable genius. You know, you don't have to worry about your Trump uncle seeing that. They're probably not going to notice, but you'll know it's there. Yeah, I really like <laughs> that we went with like a like kind of like a cool, more modern design. It's not you know, like in your face merchandise. And we just thought you guys would appreciate that because that's kind of the merch I think that we would want to. Yeah. Um, I think especially since we decided that we can't really expect any or most people to want to wear a shirt that says avocado hose. <laughs> <laughs> that is on we, there too. <laughs> yeah. But see, that's the thing. It's very tiny print. So somebody would really have to be looking for it to find it. And, you know, I feel like if somebody's going to look that closely at your shirt, they're just asking to be offended anyway. So, you True. know, I wouldn't worry about it. <laughs> Yeah, personal <laughs> space. People need to stay yeah. away from you anyway. If people are getting close enough to read some of these words. They probably need to be further away. Yeah. Have you tested for COVID before you try to read my shirt? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that's a good tagline for the shirt. <laughs> So we're very excited to be able to offer a new physical gift every year for patrons at the Bay level or higher. Uh, We're really proud of the gifts that we release every year. We've done an adulting planner. We've done signed album art, a handwritten letter for one of the three of us, all kinds of things. So we really appreciate your support at patreon.com slash millennial. Patreon is the reason why we are a weekly podcast. It is expensive and it is time consuming to run a weekly podcast. So we cannot emphasize enough how important your support is. And little kind of exciting announcement, at least from our perspective, and I think it's going to be this is going to be great for listeners as well. We're handling the fulfillment process differently this year. Beginning in September, every Bay and higher patron will be receiving a unique redemption link for the shirt. Then all you're going to have to do is pick your shirt size and enter your mailing address. And that's it. No credit card required. No nothing. Just a easy order form. Absolutely free. Once you click through this redemption link, and then you're going to get your shirt. If you're not a patron, it's not too late to sign up. Pledge by Saturday, September 6th at the Bay level or higher, and you'll receive your redemption link in three months. And immediately, you'll get benefits like our monthly roll calls, variety shows, Zoom hangouts, and new 
After Darks, live streams, and ad-free millennials. So there's all kinds of things you're going to get immediate access to. We just need you to be a patron for a couple months first before we send you that redemption link. Thanks, everybody, for your support. We really appreciate it. So the big news today, Tim Walls is Kamala's VP choice. Honestly, I feel really good about it and really excited about it. I feel like he is the perfect complement to this ticket. And what I love about it is he is simultaneously like he simultaneously like fits that profile of like an older white man. But he's also super progressive, Mm. which is exciting. I think a lot of people thought that there was going to have to be this compromise where Kamala went with someone who was a lot more moderate than he is. But when you look at what he's done as governor in Minnesota, like free lunch programs, free public um, college and university. Those are just like a couple of things that I'm rattling off off the top of my head. Oh, legalized recreational marijuana. Like he he is extremely he's an extremely progressive governor at the same time also a gun owner so he's like able to check so many boxes that aren't necessarily on one side or the other of the ideological line and i think that makes him a really strong vp also i would say just being from the midwest i Mm -hmm. think that when you live on the coasts like andrew and i do you kind of forget Sometimes that not everybody um, is looking for the same things you are. I think he's really going to resonate as somebody who's grown up there with a huge chunk of middle America that often feels invisible. And he'll be able to um, speak to their experience and talk about what they're going to do for them. So I am really hopeful that that'll be helpful in the long run, too. Yeah, he is such a unique candidate, I think. It's very exciting. Waltz was also an early supporter of gay rights. He actually sponsored a gay straight alliance at the school that he taught at while also being the football coach that same year. Can you imagine that? Like, I can imagine the leader of the gay straight alliance at my high school also being the football coach. Like, there's just a lot of unique elements of Tim Waltz that I think is going to break some people's brains, particularly on the right. He's a bit of an enigma. Yeah. And I I think it's such a good representation of where probably a lot of Americans are. Like, realistically, large groups of people are really complex. And I think we're in such an era of polarization that we're all kind of conditioned to believe that people are either left or right. And there's no sort of like middle ground nuance or no sort of like overlap of those concepts and those values. And the reality is people are more complicated than that. I think he shows that. A hundred percent. He's also a veteran. Like I said, he was a Mm -hmm. high school teacher, but he taught in China in 1989. Got involved in politics after being barred from a George W. Bush rally. (laughs) In 2004. Wow. (laughs) He and his wife had their two children through in vitro fertilization. He coached the 1999 football state champions. He is Lutheran. He doesn't drink after a DWI in 1995, which the right has been pointing out that he got that DWI. I think that's pretty impressive. He got it in 1995. Didn't touch alcohol after that. He also does not drink coffee. Now that I disagree with, but it's okay. Nobody's perfect. But he does drink Diet Mountain Dew, just like... Uh, J.D. Vance, which is <laughs> an interesting coincidence. Yeah. Huh. I wonder if he specifically called that out because J.D. Vance tried to make a really bad joke about how liberals were going to say that drinking diet Mountain Dew was racist. Well, you know what? This is. Do you remember that? <laughs> yeah, I do. And that's why I called it out. But then you go and look at his Twitter and you'll learn a lot about the guy. First of all, he's a huge Bruce Springsteen fan. I mean, This one clip went viral today where he's at the state fair with his daughter and he's wearing a Springsteen T-shirt that I have from the tour last year. He went to Springsteen with Beto last year. He made a Springsteen reference during the rally earlier today. He's a big Bruce fan, so I was very excited by that. (laughs) Uh, But he's also a Swifty, evidently, because on his Twitter, he posted a photo of his cat reacting to 
having trouble getting Taylor Swift tickets. And in the background, you see a bottle of Diet Mountain Dew by his computer. (laughs) (laughs) And this was in 2022. Uh, He also declared state Bruce Springsteen and state Beyonce days in the state of Minnesota. There was one great moment during this rally in Philadelphia tonight. And I'm going to play it. Like all regular people I grew up with in the heartland, J.D. studied at Yale. (laughs) Had his career funded by Silicon Valley billionaires. And then wrote a bestseller trashing that community. Come on! That's not what middle America is. And I got to tell you, I can't wait to debate the guy. That is if, you, if he's willing to get off the couch and show up. So. <laughs> <laughs> Look at his face. Watch. He makes one more great face. <laughs> <laughs> Look at Kamala's face. <laughs> yeah. And the people behind him in the audience were just loving it. Look at those faces. Like people are. Al- I, I saw this moment. I texted some friends. I am alive right now. I'm excited to be a Democrat voting for this ticket. It's just. Yeah. Oh, so good. And it, it's not just people who lean left that are excited about this. A number of prominent Republicans have come out to endorse Kamala Harris. Now, I will say, I don't think they would be endorsing her if they actually had a legitimate candidate running on their side. But a lot of them have come out, including uh, like the Arizona governor and members of their state legislature, announced their endorsement of Kamala Harris while they had signs behind them plastered on the wall that said Republicans for Harris. I think the entire Lincoln project has declared for Harris. So it's, it's pretty incredible. Like you give, you give people an option that they can see some optimism about and it, it changes things pretty radically. Now, There's a long time between now and election day. So the only thing, the only thing that I want to make sure we caution ourselves about is not to get complacent because we got complacent in 2016. 2016. We thought it was in the bag. It very much wasn't. That was a nasty shock. (laughs) Some of us, including some of our listeners, we were all together when that happened. It was terrible. I don't want it to happen again. So we got to make sure that we're all registered to vote. We got to make sure if you're voting absentee that you request your absentee ballot in time. I know in Georgia, um, it requests open up for absentee ballots on August the 19th. So I'm going to be requesting mine that day. Um, we just we have to make sure that we turn out and that we show up because the momentum and the excitement that we feel right now means absolutely nothing if we don't turn out and vote. So we have to, you know, our Joe Mentum 2020 theme, yeah. like that's what <laughs> is now running through my head when I look at this ticket. Like, I'm excited to be outside and be a Democrat again. <laughs> I'm not ashamed <laughs> by my choices on the ticket. Oh, it's just so great. It's so great. I love being happy. I visited the Kamala Harris online store. And they added some new merchandise this morning. Yes. I purchased the uh, Childless Dog Ladies for Kamala Harris t shirt What? They have it? They have it. They have have a cat one, too. Oh, I'm getting it. Maybe I need one. Do it. Do it. And also, they have a Harris Walls camo hat. And I ordered that as well. Okay. What a look this is going to be. A camo hat that says <laughs> Harris Walls and then a Childless Dog Lady t shirt. I'm going to be wearing both at the same time. It's probably going to be my Halloween costume. And it's definitely going to be going to be the look of my fall 2024. Seriously. I want to call out a comment from our Discord. Megan, uh, who's joining us for the live stream tonight, says, Walls is from my hometown and I've had him as a representative and now governor for 17 years. So I know he'll be good. I'm very excited. Good. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. Man, I'm getting that shirt. Like you as have soon as to. as soon as we finish, I'm gonna wear, I'll probably wear it next week. 
<laughs> Who am I kidding? No, well, maybe we're in the millennial shirt next week. And then the. <laughs> <sighs> okay, yeah. It's going to take some time to come in anyway, whereas you already have the millennial shirt. That's true. I do already have the millennial shirt. It's in the laundry. That's why I didn't wear it today. It's fine. We got a few <laughs> weeks to promote it. The price wasn't bad. I mean, considering it's a campaign donation, too. It was $32. So, like, yeah. you know. That's that's reasonable for a T-shirt these days. Yeah. Still no coconut merch, unfortunately. But <sighs> Do you think that moment has passed? It feels like a million years ago. But they're doing the childless dog slash cat lady thing. Yeah, that's true. Is there anything that says you, you exist within the context? <laughs> no, no. There is a thirst trap of her husband like 30 I years ago. I did see ago. that one. Yeah. I, I don't get that. <laughs> There's a control guns, not girl shirt. I almost bought that. That's yeah, a good line. That's, that's clever. Is there like um, a, a Tumblr that says uh, we did it, Joe? Like no. a shaker, perhaps? <laughs> no, they are selling dark Brandon merchandise still, which I think is pretty funny. Smart. Like, I would love the big head dark Brandon lawn sign. Like it's it's a cut out of his head. You know what? I should just buy it and put it in my backyard. I've been thinking about my front yard. I'll put it in my backyard. Yeah. The thing staring at me with its laser eyes during the yeah. day. Freak out the dogs. I was going to say it could stare at you while you're in your pool. <laughs> <laughs> My stock tank pool. Let's not get it twisted. I'm not rich. Lifeguards on duty. <laughs> yeah, the lifeguards. Okay, now I have to order this. I'll, maybe I'll just get it on eBay. It'll probably be cheaper. But then you can't support the campaign. Yeah. I already bought the hat and the shirt. They, uh, they got okay. money well, from me. one more donation. <laughs> yeah. All separate shipping expenses, by the way, because I realized I should buy okay, the hat after yeah. the shirt. Oh, Whatever. no. You got too excited. I know. Exa- seriously. But Pam, we got some feedback from a listener we wanted to address. We thought it was an interesting topic. So we got an email from a listener named Natalie who said that they recently discovered our podcast after hearing our friend Christine Riccio over at Forking Fangirls talk about it so much. So thank you so much for checking us out. We really appreciate it. And um, Natalie wanted to just draw our attention to the fact that they had noticed that we have been referring to Kamala Harris as simply Kamala although we often refer to Joe Biden as Joe. And in the email, they said, I find this problematic because Kamala has a feminine connotation, inferring listeners to think of the candidate as a woman. Meanwhile, Biden or even Harris doesn't have an inherent gender connotation. I implore you to think about the unintentional message given when referring to a male politician by their last name, but a female by their first, that their gender matters, that female is less than, or that women aren't powerful enough to be referred to by their last name. And they said this very respectfully and also went on to say that they didn't write to attack us. They just wanted us to be aware of the fact that we're doing it in case we weren't. And we really appreciated the feedback. And we did want to take a minute to address it and talk about why it is that we're using Kamala instead of Harris on the panel here. I definitely feel where this is coming from. And I I respect it. And I appreciate the sentiment behind it. I think that there is nuance to be had in this conversation, though. Um, We have frequently (laughs) and often on this show switched back and forth between first names and last names of politicians, whether we supported them or not. Um, And there's also an element of this that has to do with the way the candidate is marketing themselves. In Kamala Harris's case, her campaign is very much leading with introducing her as Kamala, her introducing herself that way, even if you look at her social media, um, that is the way that she's been leading. Now, if she were to change her approach, we probably would too, just to match her. Um, but I think there's there's a difference um, between someone discussing her as a candidate and calling her Kamala, her name, versus somebody using her name in more of a pejorative sense to talk down on her. I think there are a lot of different ways that using someone's first name can still be respectful. 
And there are a lot of ways where it can be disrespectful. I can tell you one nuance for me is I'm pretty quick to refer to Joe Biden as Joe or Uncle Joe when I'm happy with him. Um, when I'm not happy with him, he very quickly becomes Biden. You're like his parent. Yeah. And I and I think that that is something that realistically I would expect to do with any elected official, especially ones that lead with that tendency of being on a first name basis with their electorate to try and seem more relatable. And I would also point out in um, to that point, Bernie is another example of a man who led with his first name for the sake of being relatable. He was definitely a man for the people. And I know that that's part of Kamala's campaign as well. In addition to, I think part of it must also be, you know, her being proud of her identity. She's mixed race. That's a really big deal. Just by being mixed race, she represents a huge part of the U.S. population. I think she's really proud of her roots. And I think as far as like brand recognition goes, it's very smart of her campaign. Um, As far back as 2020, when they first started out to brand her as something that was so unique that people would not only remember her name, but also remember how to pronounce it. I do think it's an interesting conversation to have and it's a good conversation to have. So, you know, again, we appreciate you bringing this up. I think it would be different if we were um, a different uh, sort of show or even like a traditional news outlet. I come from a journalism background. If I was writing a story about Kamala Harris, I would definitely attribute uh, quotes by saying Harris said, right? You can't write Kamala said in a newspaper setting, but we're a pretty relaxed panel here. We're just a group of friends trying to um, work through politics, teach each other about politics, hopefully teach you all about politics while we commentate on that. So um, because it's a relaxed setting, I think that that is another thing to kind of keep in mind when we talk about the nuances here as well. Um, but yeah, it's a, definitely an, an interesting conversation. I know I've seen other um, publications tackle this as well over the last few weeks, and I'm sure this isn't, isn't the last that we'll hear of it. And it'll be interesting to hear um, or to see if and when her campaign decides to change the branding. They've done it a bit. I mean, we were talking about the merch. You know, you can buy plenty of stuff that says Harris Walls, but that's like traditional campaign material, like a bumper sticker T-shirt. I think the points you raised, you both raised, were really good. And I think it's just an interesting aspect to keep in mind as we move towards November. And after receiving that email, I've tried to keep myself in check a little more because I do think there's plenty of reason to just refer to her as Harris instead of Kamala. But I see both sides of this. So, yeah, just something for everybody to keep in mind. Thank you, Natalie, for that email. We're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to talk about affordable at home entertainment. So I've been wanting to talk about this surprising bit of information that I heard a few weeks ago. And I didn't really have an angle in terms of like how to talk about it beyond just being like, can you believe this? But we ended up thinking up an angle. So here we go. The most popular streaming TV app is not Disney Plus, Hulu, Netflix, any of these. It's Tubi, T-U-B-I here in America. And that's because it's free and it actually outpaced Disney Plus viewership. Variety recently reported that Nielsen data showed that May was Tubi's most watched month ever with an average audience of 1 million viewers, up 46% from a year ago. The streamer edged out Disney Plus, which averaged 969,000 viewers. Tubi also easily beat Peacock, Max, Paramount Plus, while also topping free competitors such as the Roku channel and Pluto TV. YouTube is the only free ad-supported streaming platform with more viewers than Tubi. Now, this shocks me because we're always talking about fucking Netflix and Disney+. Plus. Did you see Stranger Things? Did you see Mandalorian? All this. Nobody's talking about what they're watching on Tubi, but it's, it's quietly become the most watched streaming app because it's free. Do you two use Tubi? No, I don't. I feel like I should, though. I downloaded it a few months ago specifically to watch 
one show, which is my recommendation for the week. And I'll save it for the end of the show. So oh. the recommendations aren't sparse. But yeah, before then, I've actually had it downloaded for a while because... You know, Mama G, she loves a good deal, even though she doesn't pay for any of the streamers. She's a sure. freeloader. <laughs> she wants to act my like she's and helping I play you. For all of them. Yeah. It, well, no, she's like, so she asked my brother and I, she was like, you know, I, I heard about Tubi. Is it really free? Like, is it is it dangerous? Am I going to get like <laughs> ma- like a, a virus? And my brother's in marketing and he's like, no, he's like, they, they'll take all your information and like sell it and they'll like feed you ads. But Tubi's fine. Who so doesn't? Who doesn't had, take our info and yeah, sell exactly, it? Exactly. Exactly. Same old shit, different day. So we downloaded Tubi for her so she could have like another place to watch free movies and I hadn't really paid attention to it since because we pay for all this other stuff. So obviously, like the knee jerk reaction is to go to a streamer that, you know, but a few months ago when I redownloaded it specifically to watch this one show, I was really surprised by the offerings that they have. It's way more um, extensive than it was a couple of years ago. And they have like not super old movies like you can watch stuff from like the mid, you know, 2010s. You could watch stuff from like as early as like maybe 2022, 2023. They have TV shows now. So it's not a bad free option for people that don't want to pay for another streamer. No, it's not. It seems like a good platform for when you're just like, oh man, I don't know what the hell to watch. You just load it up. Why not? It's free. You might already have it downloaded on Apple TV or wherever else you're watching, Roku or whatever. But I did actually recommend Pluto several months ago because I had checked out all their live channels where all these channels are just airing nonstop re- reruns. For example, there's a Jeopardy, the Alex Trebek years channel, and you just get nonstop Alex Trebek Jeopardy episodes or nonstop Price is Right Bob Barker episodes. Or if you want the Drew Carey ones, you, there's a channel for those too. And I love that there's these channels that you can just turn on at any time and you can watch some of your favorite shows. That's one big gripe I've always had about like Netflix and Disney Plus. It would be nice. And I think come to think of it, Disney Plus announced they're going to start doing channels. I don't know if you remember that. If you saw that, Pam. I we did talk that. about this. Yeah. yeah. And we said it would be cool if it was like retro Disney channel, you know, yeah. that would be comforting. Yeah. And I am glad we're talking about this this week because today, Tuesday, Disney Plus announced more price hikes. The ad supported version of Disney Plus is rising $2 monthly to $9.99 a month. Disney Plus Premium No Ads is also going up by two bucks to $15.99. Hulu with ads will now cost $9.99, which is up $2. And the ad-free Hulu is going up a dollar to eighteen ninety nine per month. Also increasing by two dollars per month are the Disney Triple Play bundles with Disney Plus, Hulu, and ESPN Plus. Well, the Disney Plus Hulu Basic bundle with ads is going up by one dollar. <laughs> so many damn options. Yeah. But 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 also recently, Hulu, Disney, and Max are teaming up for their own bundle. So the pricing is $16.99 per month with ads and then $29.99 a month with no ads. So that works out to about $5.60 per streamer per month with ads, which is not bad. But how long until this the price of this bundle goes up? Like That's how they lock you in. It's like, oh, here's a great yeah. price. And then they start slowly rising the prices until they meet resistance. And Disney is clearly not meeting resistance yet. They've raised the prices four times in like four years. Spotify has raised the price twice in a year and a half or so, and it's because they're not meeting resistance. So we got to do what we're doing with McDonald's and Burger King and all these other fast food places that have been taking a hit and put our foot down on these damn streaming apps. Remember that sticker that Pat got me for Christmas? Touch grass, eat ass. We all need to be doing that. That should have been on this shirt. (laughs) Touch grass actually is. Okay, I was going to say, I thought it was. Not the eat ass part. (laughs) I I have a question for y'all. So with all of this in mind, how long do y'all think it is before services like Tubi and Pluto start introducing some kind of paid features? Like, I just have a hard time imagining these features free streamers 
being free in perpetuity. Well, I think what probably helps them, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, Andrew, is that they're not doing original content. So they have nothing to fund. They're just paying for like the streaming rights for certain things. And then they probably make their money back and then some through ads. So, So as long as they're not looking to fund like to be originals, Pluto originals, I have a feeling that they could be sustainable for a while, assuming they don't get greedy. Exactly. And, see, and that's where I'm suspicious. <laughs> well, but the ad plans do <laughs> the ad plans do really well for Netflix and Disney Plus and these others. Like they are making bank. And this is why Netflix stock has been through the roof because they finally introduced an ad tier and people want the cheaper tier. So they go for it, but then they're being thrown advertising and they're they're making Netflix is making bank off the ad. So I think the advertising model is actually the way to go. It's not the subscription model for all these streamers. Because guess what? It worked with cable television. It works with cable television. They figured out a model that works. The ad free model is not one that works. Yeah, but I mean, we all had to pay for cable packages. Like, I mean, of course, there's. And we still got ads. Yeah, but I guess what I'm saying is like, I have a hard time imagining any business saying, yeah, we're com- we're comfortable with like this level of revenue. I find it really hard to believe at some point their need to grow and earn more won't be passed on to the people who are using those streamers. Like, Again, you just said it a few minutes ago, Andrew, that's how they get you in. They get you in because it's a really good deal, in this case, free, until they have you locked in or until they put out some new feature or new product that you can't possibly live without, and then they charge you for it. Like, Yeah, yeah. You're probably right. That That's something I guess I've, I'm trying to block out of my mind because I'm so <laughs> sick of this strategy. But they are in a growth period right now, right? I mentioned that uh, Pluto or sorry, Tubi has grown 46% over the last year. So I guess to your point, once they finally plateau, that's when they'll think about introducing that subscription model. But for now, when it, they're growing because there's no subscription model, it's just all advertising revenue. Or somebody's going to buy them. That's the other thing. It's like somebody buys them. Oh my god, could you imagine? <gasps> Honestly, that's like sounds like a smart idea for like Netflix to buy Pluto or Tubi and then mm-hmm. you have all these live channels under Netflix and then Netflix raises the prices again. Wow. Uh-oh. Hmm. Enjoy it while it lasts, y'all. That'll be my 2025 prediction <laughs> that e- either Pluto and or Tubi will be purchased by a larger streamer and ruined. <laughs> Well, for now, I'm happy for people who are turning to Tubi and Pluto because it's also telling Netflix and these others, we're sick of your price hikes. We want something cheaper or free. I'm curious, though, in light of this discussion about advertising, no advertising, which streamers do we have ads on and which do we not have ads on? I don't have ads on anything. Oh, you're rich. And No, I'm not. And that's why I've really reduced the number of streamers that we have. Oh, I see. But honestly, Disney Plus is next on the chopping block. I've debated this for a while because I love having that library available to me, but I just don't use it enough. So Disney, you're on notice. Give Laura more episodes of Bluey or she is out. That's the only reason she's been hanging on. (laughs) Yeah, 100%. That's my daily meditation. Never seen an episode, but... (laughs) Adults love Bluey. It's a kid's show, but adults love it. Seriously. Oh, yeah. So you might want to try it as a form of daily meditation. (laughs) How about you, Pam? So I have uh, ad-free plans on Netflix. That's a fairly recent addition in the last couple of months. And also Max, but I don't quite count Max because we actually get it for free through the cell phone plan at AT AT&T. So it's ad free, but I don't really pay for it. Right. Okay. So I'm sharing subscriptions with my family right now while that lasts. For example, my sister actually has Hulu Live TV. I don't use the live TV part. Maybe I should because Google TV is um, or YouTube TV is $72 a month. And I pay for that because I can't quit it. Um, But 
I get Hulu and Disney Plus through my sister, and it does have ads, which is fine. And then I get Max through my mom, which also has ads, which is fine. But then I pay for Netflix ad free. And then Pat actually splits Prime with his mom. And that one has ads because, as we all know, they started adding ads to Prime. And you can pay to get rid of the ads, but not worth it. I actually, we, you, the three of us were talking about this last week off air. Having ads is actually kind of nice because you get a bathroom break, you get a check your phone break. And with a lot of these apps, they have a little countdown in the top right. How much longer the ads are running for. So I know how long I have to pee or refresh my drink. Yeah. And then for me, too, it's a way to justify keeping streamers because it's I think about it as like this is where girl math comes in. It's like it's like I'm paying two for one, like I'm getting two for one. You know, like I could pay $14.99 for ad free Disney Plus, for example, or I could pay ad supported for Netflix and Disney Plus. And that equals out to about the same price. Girl, that's not just girl math. That's math. That's good math right there. <laughs> well, then nobody's giving me any, giving me anything for free. That's where the the girl math comes in because I'm just like it's like buy one get one. It's not. Uh huh. <laughs> I'm still paying for both. I'm okay with ads in certain circumstances. Um, if it's a TV show that I'm like interested in and I'm following, but it's not something that has me like on the edge of my seat then I don't mind ads. But if I'm trying to watch something that has me super engaged and on the edge of my seat, ads piss me off so much. (laughs) Because it's like, you get to a really pivotal moment. And then all of a sudden, you get like, the weird ass um, pit bull, Kyocho bounty paper towels ad. I don't know if y'all have seen that one, but it's just, it's so distracting. <laughs> You're like into something and then it yeah. just cuts to some ad. So I think it just depends. Yeah. That's how it used to be, though, right? Like, you know, you're watching an intense un- episode of Breaking Bad and then it cuts to uh, Charmin wipe your ass with our new toilet paper. <laughs> Yeah, but I think... And back then it was five minutes of ads. At least it's usually not that bad on streaming. Yeah. Yes. Network TV like that used to be cut for ads. So... Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like you can tell when it fades to black. Right. So you at least had that transition (laughs) where like you knew you were about to get an ad. But sometimes depending on how they're inserted nowadays it can feel really jarring and like it's not at a good point because shows aren't really made with ad slots in mind anymore yeah it is interesting to think about like how are they deciding where the ads go is it some sort of algorithm that's deciding or are people manually working behind the scenes time yeah it's like blocks right because like for i I just think about it like youtube like after eight minutes you can insert an uh, a mid-roll ad right so that's why, like, on YouTube, like, you since you can't really pick where it goes, it just goes right after, like, the eight-minute mark or whatever. Like, I, I don't know how much YouTube you all watch, but I often find myself having to rewind so that I can, like, get whatever was cut and then go forward to get whatever. But, but they're not going to insert an ad on Netflix, like, mid-sentence. It's usually at the end of a scene, mm-hmm. right? I just feel like there's some human work happening behind the scenes i agree but i still feel because the show is not shot with like a specific placement for an ad break in mind it still feels really jarring should i put an ad slot in our show where i said they don't put ads mid-sentence right and just (laughs) (laughs) mid-sentence Yeah, mid, just for mid, this mid week. sentence. I think that, <laughs> just one ad that'd be really funny. <laughs> that would be so funny. What would it be for? <laughs> I don't know. We don't have the. I mean, it would be dynamically inserted, so we don't know. But <laughs> no. <laughs> what if it's nothing? It's just like our intro and outro music, and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> well, there has been one strategy through Max I've seen in particular, maybe Hulu as well. I think they do these limited limited or no interruption episodes so like with max throughout the this current season of house of the dragon i think they've only run a single minute long ad at the top of the episode and that's it 
And that's perfect because they're not interrupting anything. You get your one ad out of the way and you're all set. So I hope that trend continues, but it seems too good to be true. Yeah. Again, they're just going to keep pushing the envelope until they can't anymore to the point you raised earlier. Well, to the point of that resistance, talking about some other strategies to avoid having to pay first or maybe pay less. First of all, keep an eye out for family plans. For example, I mentioned YouTube TV and it's very expensive, $72.99 price point. This is live streaming channels like uh, CNN, HGTV, your local news channels, all that. I like it. I love the DVR. It works really well. You can use it on any device, which is great, especially when you're traveling. Google does have a family plan. And if you create a family plan, multiple people under your family plan who don't live in the same house as you can use that same YouTube TV account. So in theory, I could split my YouTube TV account with some friends or with my family. And then that price, uh, that $72.99 price point comes down pretty quickly. And I only know this because my brother's been freeloading off of me with my YouTube TV account, and he's in Florida, and it works just fine for him. So definitely check that out if you've been looking to cut down your cable bill. You can also threaten to cancel. Right, Pam? You've you've tried this. I have not actually threatened to cancel. I just, like, in a weird roundabout way, I'm pretty sure Hulu thinks that I, I just... I'm, threatening to never come back because I signed up for the Disney Plus bundle because it was only $2 extra to add Hulu. And Hulu thinks that I'm not subscribed at all to them anymore. So they keep sending me emails that's like, come back for $2.99 for six months Mm. or like get three months free. (laughs) So they will come after you and try and get you hooked back. And I just think it's really funny that they think I'm not paying them at all, but I actually am because, you know, I'm paying the big mouse. Big mouse owns everything. (laughs) I will say a lot of these, I mean, subscriptions to things like this in general will have like win back offers. So if you do go in and act like you're going to cancel, they'll usually pop something up that's like, are you sure you want to go? Like, here's three months for 50% off or something like that. Um, I've done that on Hulu. I don't have them anymore. But I I did that on Hulu so many times. And I was actually kind of shocked by it. I was like, why does it keep offering this to me over and over again? <laughs> hmm. Sirius XM. Now, I know it's not streaming television, but I've liked Sirius XM over the years. And if you call them and threaten to cancel, they'll give you a pretty cheap rate. I want to say you can get it as cheap as like five dollars a month. They're really desperate to keep customers around. Um, New York Times, too. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yep. And I think Washington Post, probably probably mm-hmm. a lot of the traditional media outlets with subscriptions. And then there's free trials. Now, I've actually been offered a few free trials for YouTube Premium, and I enjoy using YouTube Premium. It's so nice to not have any ads on YouTube. And maybe now YouTube Premium is only $14 per month. There's a family plan option too, so you could bring the price down. Only $14 a month. And that, of course, gives you access to billions and trillions and zillions of hours of content for a pretty cheap monthly price. So maybe you say, hey, you know what? F the traditional streaming apps like Netflix and all those. I'm just going to homemade content (laughs) through YouTube. That could be a good option. And Elizabeth, who's listening live right now, actually said she's had YouTube premium for a couple of years originally to at least theoretically reduce ads for my kid, but it backfired. Now I watch too much YouTube. For some people, YouTube is the only place they go to watch anything. So I get that. It makes sense. Mm -hmm. By the way, millennial episodes coming to YouTube soon. Yeah. Woo. So if you sign up for YouTube TV or YouTube premium and then you cancel, you'll probably get a free trial again. Pam, I know you like doing the free trials through Amazon. I do just because it's easier. I don't have to like get out my card to like a lot lot of times, sometimes these free um, trials require you to put a card on file and my card's already on file on Amazon on prime. So it's really easy to just go through there and do it and then cancel it after 
um, a week or whatever it is. Um, I do this a lot if there's like a movie, like a newer movie that I just want to watch or like a show I know I can binge the whole first season of in a week. It's usually about a week. Sometimes it's 10 days. Um, yeah. And then you can just cancel it. Usually right away, I think. And it, it would depends. be mindful I don't know. trying I was, to do that. Yeah. I was just telling you when we were planning this that I, I feel like a lot of free trials now are switching gears. And so instead of letting you cancel right away and keep the free trial through like the end of the, say, seven day period, they're like, oh, just kidding. Like your free trial ends at midnight tonight when you cancel. <laughs> so mm. you might have to set a reminder for yourself. But yeah, it's not a bad way to... Um, get some free content and and then like in relation to this too just because we're talking about amazon the other thing that i do a lot too is if i don't if i'm ordering something on prime and i don't need it right away i'll take advantage of the um, no rush digital credits and you can use those to like rent movies and also to sign up for like say like a month's worth of a channel that's a really you good know, call. Or at least get a little yeah. discount. So I usually just like, if I don't need something, I'll save it up. And then before the digital credit expires, because they do expire, so you have to be mindful of that, I'll just like use it to sign up for like a month of, you know, stars or something like that. Well, and just to circle back to the trials really quick, when we're talking about trials on Amazon Prime, you can actually subscribe to Paramount Plus, Max, AMC yeah. Plus, MGM Plus, which All nobody's heard of, but on there. Challengers, the movie is on there. Yes, yeah, Stars. And so... Passion Flicks for all the romance book girlies, ooh. like that's on there. PBS Masterpiece. The Lifetime Movie Club for all the yeah, Hallmark romance Hallmark Movie Channel. <laughs> yep. <laughs> it's all on there. So if you've already run out of a free trial through Max.com or ParamountPlus.com, you can still go to Amazon and get another trial through there. So you can watch the new SpongeBob Sandy Cheeks movie or the new season of Fear the Walking Dead, whatever, or see Challengers on MGM+. Plus. It's the only reason why I know MGM Plus exists. So those are some tips. And Pam, I know you've brought this up previously. Sometimes there's Black Friday deals, too, which we're still a ways away from. Yeah. But. Yeah. Keep an eye out for Black Friday deals or just like deals anytime. Right now, we my family is splitting Peacock because Peacock had a deal where you just pay 24 bucks for the whole year. So we have Peacock for a whole year. It's $2 a month. I didn't pay for it, but I appreciate mooching off my brother. Um, but yeah, like uh, uh, Hulu always has the um, Black Friday deal. Usually you can get like a whole year's worth of ad supported Hulu for 12 bucks or something like that. Um, and I heard through Reddit and I have tried this in the past. I don't know if it'll still work this year, but as long as you cancel your Hulu like a month or two before Black Friday, you can get in on the Black Friday deal. Ooh, so little Reddit maybe look hack. into that. Yeah. yeah, cool. And see what Reddit has to say. It, it might work for other streamers, but yeah, I just know it has worked in the past for Hulu. Yeah. Well, listeners, let us know if you have any other hacks or advice for keeping down the price of your at-home entertainment apps. And check out Tubi and Pluto. There's some really entertaining stuff on there, including those live channels that I really love. And just think, I mean, Mama G watches to be so you know it's a cool place yeah she's obsessed <laughs> i don't know what she's watching on there but she's on there <laughs> i bet is she in the soap operas i think there's a soap opera channel no she's not oh. she's not really into that yeah okay maybe like the dr phil channel i bet there's a dr phil channel <laughs> oh she does love real housewives if real housewives are on there she's there all right well we're going to talk more entertainment specifically those collectible popcorn buckets you've been seeing at the movie theaters but first we're going to take a quick break of real one and we'll be right back all right pam before you get started i just want to let you know that i brought my barbie popcorn bucket to today's Ooh, episode i forgot I forgot how that one looked. That is a cool one. Yeah. See, uh, you have to fill up with popcorn in there. Yeah. And it looks like you get a sizable amount of popcorn in there, which is something that I want to talk about, too. An arm's length of popcorn. <laughs> if you've been to the movies recently at all, and by recently, at least within the last like couple of years, you probably noticed that commemorative popcorn buckets are 
all the rage these days, especially amongst those that love collecting pop culture memorabilia. And they've actually become so popular that Rolling Stone published a piece about them back in February. And this piece was specifically tied to the viral Dune sandworm sandworm bucket. How can we forget? And, um, you know, obviously that one took the internet by storm for obvious reasons, but that's definitely not the only popcorn bucket that's gone viral this year. And we thought we could like return to this subject specifically because Deadpool and Wolverine hit theaters just a couple of weeks ago, and they're the latest blockbuster to really get in on this action and have a popcorn bucket that's gone viral. I'm specifically talking about the Wolverine head bucket, which was <laughs> modeled after the viral sandworm dune bucket. So if you haven't seen this for whatever reason, it's um, literally Wolverine's head with his mouth <laughs> wide open and you basically just fist Wolverine's mouth <laughs> to get your popcorn out. <laughs> It's very sexual. <laughs> it is, yeah. And I think that there's some writing on the side, too, that they're like, use this for popcorn or like anything you want, because of course <laughs> it's Deadpool, so Deadpool would. Um, But yeah, this is just like one of a handful of commemorative Deadpool and Wolverine buckets that you can actually get right now. And also commemorative cups, because that's another piece to this puzzle here. And in the doc, if you're curious, I linked to an article that gives you like the full round rundown of just how many collectible popcorn buckets and drink receptacles you can get just for Deadpool and Wolverine. Um, obviously, Deadpool and Wolverine and Dune are not the only movies that have gotten in on this action. There's been collectibles for um, the Hunger Games prequel. Obviously, Barbie. Andrew has his Barbie popcorn bucket out. Hey, Barbie. Uh, Twisters. Basically, any movie you can think of, I think studios are really starting to see that there's a demand for this stuff. So they're scrambling to kind of come up with something cool that might entice moviegoers to buy it. Yeah, well, it brings people out to the theater, too, right? Which I think is a huge draw. Speaking of recent popcorn buckets, I went to see Inside Out 2. And at Regal, there was an Anger, the character, popcorn bucket, and his hair which are flames lit up. And I was so tempted to buy that thing. And I said, Pat, I want it. But then I was like, but then I came to my senses. Adult Andrew came to life and said, wait a second. I want this now. It would excite me to purchase this now, but I'm never going to use this damn thing again. It's going to sit in my cabinet collecting dust and like yes. it's cool but at least with the barbie one like i feel like this is very displayable i could put something in it after i could put a barbie in it if i wanted to the anger anger popcorn bucket the uh deadpool wolverine one i it's just like it's just junk to me otherwise so so this is another side to this that i i wanted to ask you all and i and i'll ask it now i guess like well i guess before we get ahead of ourselves has anyone else purchased commemorative buckets or or drink cups i i bit the bullet at the heiress tour movie because of course i would but as soon as i came home i was like what am i gonna do with these things you know and that's just me having like purchased two i can't imagine what it's like for somebody that has multiple variants of these buckets for multiple movies like that's something because they take up a lot of space it's not like you can really like I was just going to say that. They're not like like you're speaking from experience, Laura. Yeah. So I don't buy these, but Mark definitely does. He is very into like commemorative pop culture memorabilia, especially for things that he really, really cares about. So the big thing for him, of course, like this shouldn't have shocked anyone, is Marvel. So we do have several Marvel movie popcorn tins and they are very nice i mean i don't know if y'all have seen some of the older ones that they've done for um some of the bigger marvel releases like the infinity war and the end game type stuff um they are really really nice i will say we live in a small space and uh he hasn't added to that collection very much recently because we are pretty much out of display room (laughs) for things like that. So that's not to say that he won't continue to grow his collection, but I think we're going to have to like find a way to consolidate or decide like 
what maybe goes in storage versus what stays out on display. We have a nice little shelf in our kitchen where we have the ones that we have displayed right now. And it is pretty cool if you are a big fan um, because it does lend this like this air of like exclusivity right? Because like you can only Mm -hmm. get things like that for a limited period of time. And presumably, if you are a super fan of something like that, you probably went to the midnight release or to a, you know, at least an early showing of the movie and you were there when the crowd was all excited for the various Easter eggs and like fan service moments that happen in the movie. So I can get it. Like, uh, as I said, I don't, personally collect them but i i can understand it because there's memorabilia that i like to collect so who am i to sit here and judge somebody else for what they want to collect you know how much political memorabilia i have like i don't have any of it displayed anymore because i'm so cynical (laughs) about everything with politics at this point but like there was a point where I was absolutely that person. I used to yeah. have a freaking Howard Dean campaign sign <laughs> on my bedroom wall when I was in high school. <laughs> yeah, and I'm about to have yeah. a Harris Walls camo hat Yeah, for eternity. So I bought the Taylor Swift Eras movie cup uh, as well. And then I did put it on eBay. And I made like, I want to say, I think I re- told this story a few months ago. Um, like I think I made exactly thirteen dollars off of it after the cost of it, which was a very Taylor Swift thing to happen. But yeah, I I get it from the angle of these items are available for a limited time. That part is exciting. Like when I saw Deadpool and Wolverine, if I had seen that sexual Wolverine popcorn bucket at the theater, I would have bought it because I was so excited to see that thing IRL because the the little promo video they made for it was hilarious. There was like, let's call it butter dripping down Wolverine's <laughs> mouth, but it was a nod to something else. Yeah. Uh, and at the movie theater we went to in Fresno, California, because we were traveling, they had signs up saying all of our Deadpool and Wolverine merchandise is sold out. Sorry. That's the other thing too. People like they, sometimes they buy them. They try to buy them early um this article also this rolling stone article also talked to a few movie theater employees and they said that it's it's created a hassle because people will harass them if they don't have certain buckets or cups or things like that which is not great be nice to those people they're working minimum wage you know they can only do so much they're not you know in charge of supply and demand or anything like that but yeah and aren't some of these things exclusive to specific theater chains like there's some of them you can only get at AMC some you can only get at Regal I will say when we saw Deadpool and Wolverine we saw it at a Regal and they didn't have anything they didn't have any of the custom popcorn buckets or anything we got because it was like the first showing they did their first showing at like three o'clock on a Thursday we got these like commemorative tickets that are you know they're cardboard but they, they that's nice though yeah they they look nice you know um yeah. but like we didn't get any popcorn tins if they had been available if this you know wolverine blowjob face um <laughs> tin had been available we would have gotten it 100 percent. i think that was an amc exclusive because yeah. we, we looked it up yeah. Not going to lie, AMC does get the cooler stuff usually. Like even the um, like because we went to for Taylor Swift, we went to Century and they did not have the cool stuff. They had a a cool drink cup, but they didn't have like the the popcorn tin, which is, you know, that that's like you can do more with that. Right. Like if I had gotten that, I would have just turned it into a planter. Not going to lie. Oh, (laughs) you know. Yeah, at least it would have been useful in taking up some space after. I would have done that with the Wolverine popcorn bucket too, turned it into a planter. Flowers could (laughs) have grown out of his mouth. That would have been beautiful. A rebirth. Speaking speaking of like bringing these commemoratives home, they can also get pretty pricey. Like some of them go for upwards of $30 or more. So, how do you all decide like what to bite the bullet on and 
when to pass because the movies are already kind of expensive. The anchor one for Inside Out 2, the, the price didn't seem too bad because it included popcorn as well, which, as we know, can be very expensive at movie theaters. I'm forgetting the price, but it felt reasonable to me. So, look, if it's like if I'm going to, I don't know, a new Harry Potter movie and they have a really cool popcorn bucket or I'm trying to think of something else I'm really passionate about that would release a movie. I don't know, Breaking Bad the movie and was like one of those canisters that they dissolved the bodies in. <laughs> if they did that as a popcorn bucket, it don't, don't be too disgusted by that idea. When they released the uh, complete DVD set, they had the DVDs in those canisters. So That's that's clever. That's cool. Yeah. 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 It's not just me being sick. They've already done this idea. But if they did that for like a Breaking Bad movie, I would probably buy that as a huge Breaking Bad fan. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, you know, I think I think it's just up to the circumstance. As I said, um, Mark is definitely the collector among the two of us. So I let him call the shots on which of those things we bring home. But I mean, that's because if something came along that I really was like, shit, I gotta have this, I would totally buy it too. Do you all, do you use them for popcorn at home? Or do they just sit on the shelf? <sighs> They're more display items. Okay. Mark yeah, would we be don't pissed fare. if you started using them to eat popcorn. <laughs> Can you well, imagine? I don't know. I mean, like, they're meant for popcorn anyway. So, or do you, or does he do that thing where he asks for the popcorn on the side? So no, that it no, no. Get all gross. Okay. <laughs> no, we, we definitely. So you get the, you get the full experience. Yes. 100%. Okay. We just didn't get the full experience of eating our popcorn out of Hugh Jackman's mouth. Uh, <laughs> what was the last um, uh, popcorn bucket? you guys got oh gosh i'm trying to think you know honestly marvel has been you know kind of rough lately marvel, which yeah. is uh <laughs> you know something that uh deadpool and wolverine has a lot of fun with so there have i gotta be honest there have been some recent marvel releases that we haven't gone to see in theaters so we wouldn't have an opportunity to get those popcorn buckets um this would have been the first one we would have gotten we might still because i know we're gonna see it at least one more time um but yeah we'll see we shall see elizabeth in the discord is saying the deadpool and wolverine are showing for resale at 100 plus yeah so the resale value for some of these is pretty high as demand gets higher well, speaking of Deadpool and Wolverine, since we brought that movie up a few times during this discussion, we want to take a minute to um, talk about the movie. And Laura, you have a review up for the film that people can watch right now, right? Yeah, that's right. So uh, after we saw the movie, myself, Mark, and Eric, um, who is over on MuggleCast, but also on What the Hype with us, got together and recorded a nice little water cooler installment for our YouTube channel. Um, you can watch that by heading over to youtube.com slash at what the hype podcast. You can also just search what the hype podcast on YouTube, or you can go to our various social channels or what the hype podcast.com. Uh, all paths will bring you <laughs> to our YouTube channel. Um, but we sat down and we had like about an hour long conversation uh, about like reviewing the movie, reacting to the movie, talking about the things that we loved about it, the things that we thought that maybe there was like a little bit of room um, where they could have like pushed a little more or done a little something extra, but we're also coming at it as like super fans. So if you're really interested to see the perspective of people who are like really, really into the MCU and now Deadpool's part in it, um, you should go check that out because we had such a great discussion. And honestly, uh, me and Mark have been talking about this movie ever since we saw it. There was just so much about it to enjoy. Like, it really was a fun ride all the way through. It yeah. was really funny. It was so much fun. I feel like all of the <laughs> the time I've spent dedicating to watching specifically the Marvel coming out of 20th Century Fox, which is kind of no more at this point, really paid off in such a satisfying way. But I could definitely tell that in my theater specifically, there were a lot of people that maybe had not um, caught up on that lore at all, because I definitely felt like I was the only one laughing at a certain number of jokes. But yeah, I think if you're somebody like us who've probably watched almost 
all of these movies, like it, it's such a joy to see how they were able to sparse all that together and create something that's like it's good for our general audiences, but it's especially good for for fans. I'm glad you bring that up because that's what I was going to say. I am a very casual Marvel fan and Deadpool is great for all audiences because it's just so darn funny and self-aware. So that's all I have to add. Even if you're not a Marvel fan, I'd go check out all three of the movies for a good laugh. Yeah, and oh my gosh, now that um now that Deadpool is officially part of the MCU and Disney. There are just so many amazing moments. I will not spoil a single one of them, but there are just so many amazing like meta fourth wall breaking moments that are specifically targeted to that. And I I love it. And I was like amazed at some of what they were able to get away with. I know. Similar but different. I'm amazed at what they're able to get away with at the Disney parks because yeah. Deadpool has officially made an appearance there. Yeah, he joked about being a bottom. Yeah, I'm shocked, but it's great. Came in on a little unicorn. It's so good. <laughs> All right. Well, listeners, if you have any feedback about today's episode, feel free to write to us in any way that's convenient to you through the website millennialshow at gmail.com through social media etc maybe through discord too we love your feedback and megan in the discord tonight also added in terms of home entertainment hacks keep switching emails like her family does for the hulu deal so let's say your trial runs out create a new email for free through gmail and then (laughs) start a new trial every time you need to catch a new season of uh Only Murders in the Building or The Bear or anything else on Hulu. Good tip, Megan. Thank you. And coming up in After Dark this week, y'all have asked for it and we have heard you. So we are returning back to our surprise bitch phone calls to patrons. We have a whole new slew of fun and interesting questions that we're going to spring on y'all. So to all of our patrons, whether you are listening live with us tonight, uh, well, Actually, the ones listening live are the only ones who are going to hear this in the moment. So I hope that y'all are by your phones. And uh, for patrons who are listening to this in like retrospect, if we end up calling you, I hope it's a real surprise. (laughs) My goal with tonight's questions is to make our listeners cry. Yeah, I wow. saw that. I was like, okay. what the heck is this, Andrew? Like, I need to <sighs> I don't know. I need to pop mine into the doc, but I promise that my questions will not make people cry. I was feeling dark. <laughs> I watched that Kamala Walsh campaign. I was like, yeah. this day is too good. It's time to bring the mood I think down. That's, I think that's your MO because do you remember when we interviewed each other and you also had really dark questions for <laughs> me and Laura? Hey, that's where the good stuff so. comes out. <laughs> Well, After Dark is part of Mega Millennial, which you can get every week when you're a patron or Apple podcast subscriber. Plus, it's ad free. Visit patreon.com slash millennial to pledge today. Spotify users will find a banner at the top of our show page or Apple podcast users can tap into the show and subscribe. Now is a great time to become a patron. In fact, it's the best time of year to become a patron because we have the IRL gift available. It's this sexy millennial word cloud t-shirt that I am wearing. We posted about it on Patreon as we announced it on air and the feedback so far has been really good. Glad that listeners are liking how it looks. Don't miss out. Pledge by September 6th. And you will receive a redemption link where you can order this t-shirt in the size that you want. And uh, you'll just pop in your address and it'll be shipped out to you. We really, really depend on your support. And we don't thank you with only a physical gift every year. We also hook you up with lots of benefits like After Dark, like our monthly Zoom hangouts, like our live streams, like Ad Free Millennial, all kinds of things. So check it all out at patreon.com slash millennial. Time for recommendations. I love saving listeners money. And I have been using for the last few years this domain registrar called Namecheap.com. We used to always do ads for GoDaddy back in the day. And GoDaddy's fine, but Namecheap is cheaper and they offer free privacy protection on your domain names. A little known fact about domain names is when you register them, people can find the address of the person the domain is registered too. So if I buy millennialshow.com, typically you could look up my address if you looked up the owner of the domain. But with Namecheap, 
you get free privacy protection with your domain purchase as well. Whereas GoDaddy upsells the privacy protection. So let's all move on from GoDaddy. It was fun while it lasted. We're all on Namecheap.com now. There's others out there, but I have been using Namecheap for all my domains. So check that one out if you're looking to buy a .com or .net. Uh, My recommendation is really mostly for myself. And I feel like if I speak it here, I'll manifest it. And because anyone who hears this um, could theoretically keep me accountable, I want to recommend journaling. This is something that I've recommended before. I think Pam has too. And it's come up a few times on the show. But, you know, honestly, sometimes life can get moving pretty fast. There can be a lot going on. And it can be really easy to forget to slow down and organize your thoughts and, uh, you know, take the trash out at the end of the day, as I've heard it described, um, because really taking that time to journal and get all your thoughts out really gives you that chance to kind of organize what actually what's actually important and decide what you're going to focus on for the next day instead of having a bunch of stuff jumbled up in your head, stressing you out. I will admit in the last several weeks, I've been pretty busy. I have fallen off the journaling bandwagon, but I am committing here and now to getting back on the horse. I'm starting tonight after we finish this recording. That's a good reminder for me too. I haven't, I need to get back into journaling because I, I do enjoy it and I just haven't done it in a while. I recommended the journal, the Apple journal app a few months ago, I think. I really like that because it creates memories for you to write about. So if you're going to go home and download Tubi because we talked about it so much and it's free, um, I have a recommendation for you. I wanted to recommend Big Mood, which is a TV show that you can stream on there. Um, It's a pretty quick binge. It's 30 minute episodes. And I believe there's only like six or eight episodes. Um, It's a dark comedy that is coming out of the UK. So it was actually a Channel 4 original um, originally. And it stars... Nicola Coughlin, who a lot of you will probably recognize from Bridgerton. She plays Penelope over there and also Lydia West. And it centers on two friends named Edie and Maggie. Um, They've been friends through thick and thin for 10 years. And it really kind of goes through the trials and tribulations of what's happening in their lives. There's a lot of uncertainty. One of them deals with bipolar disorder. So that is kind of like rearing its ugly head and also putting a big strain on the relationship. And if you're a fan of shows like Fleabag, I think that you'll really enjoy this as well. So pals, make sure you're following the show in your favorite podcast app so you never miss an episode. And we would appreciate a review in Apple Podcasts or Spotify. After Dark starts in a moment for patrons and Apple Podcast subscribers. Thanks everybody for listening. I'm Andrew. I'm Laura. And I'm Pamela. Bye, Bye everyone. Bye.